What's up everyone, welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to be going over the Google Keyword Planner. So it's gonna be my completely updated for 2021 Google Keyword Planner tutorial. This is gonna be the longer version of this video. I'm also gonna have a shorter version of this video that kind of just goes over some of the main things you need to know about Keyword Planner. Now, if you're looking to really know everything you can do with it, this is the video for you. So I'm gonna break this down into seven different lessons. And when you sign into your Google Ads account, what you're going to see here is under tools and settings if you go to planning and keyword planner you're going to see a page that looks like this so what we're going to do is i'm going to get started with the first lesson and we're just going to go one by one through them but i'm going to show you a table of contents first and you can also go to the video description so you can go to different portions of this video and find exactly what you're looking for okay so we're going to show our table of contents here for about 30 seconds so you can jump to which portion of the video you want to go to so you can also find this in the video description and you'll have clickable links in the video description. So just some of the different lessons we're gonna go over, whether it's looking for keywords in the Google Keyword Planner, combining multiple keyword lists, making sure we're refining keywords and filtering out the keywords we don't need to use. So using this, you should be able to jump to any portion of the video you want to based on what you wanna learn the most. And then you can always jump back to this portion when you wanna refine the table of contents. Okay, let's get started with the video. So we're gonna start with lesson number one, and lesson number one is gonna be accessing the Google Keyword Planner. So the first things first is if you don't already have a Google Ads account, you need to create a Google Ads account. So if we come over here and you just go to ads.google.com, you're gonna see a page that looks just like this, and you can either sign in with your existing Google Ads account, you can also sign in with an existing Google account and just set up what you need to set up in terms of your information. You don't even need to enter a billing or any information like that yet. So Otherwise, what you can do is click on start now. So either one of those will bring you into your Google Ads account. And once you have your Google Ads account open, all you need to do is, like I showed you, is click on this tools and settings, and you're gonna see a drop down menu. Now this menu sometimes is larger, and you're always gonna see the Keyword Planner over on the left. So there's gonna be a link under planning for Keyword Planner. When you click on that, you'll have access to it. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you do sign into your Google Ads account and it doesn't look like this, so your page looks a little bit different and you're looking at a Google Ads smart account, what you wanna do is switch from smart mode to expert mode. So the way to do that is to sign into your Google Ads account and you're gonna see here, once sign into your Google Ads account, click on the tools icon in the top right corner and select switch to expert mode. So with expert mode, you have access to everything and you're gonna be able to get access to the Google Keyword Planner. So I'm not positive they have this available in smart mode. I don't really ever use Google ads on smart mode. What you wanna do is use expert mode so that you can actually create your own campaigns. You should have a screen that looks like this and it will give you access to all the features of Google ads. So it, number one, in order to access the Google Keyword Planner, create a Google ads account, make sure you're in expert mode and then just go up to your tools and settings menu and find the Keyword Planner and you're gonna be able to access it that way. Okay, so for lesson number two, this is one of the main questions I always get when I create a Google Keyword Planner tutorial is how do I see the exact search volume? The answer is to run a Google Ads campaign. You don't need to be spending with your Google Ads campaign. You need to just create a campaign and with that, it will unlock all that search volume data. So what I mean is when you access the Google Keyword Planner, let's just say you discover new keywords and I'm just gonna enter Wicker Furniture here and we're gonna click on Get Results. So with a brand new Google Ads account, what you're gonna get is a range of data. Now to me, this range of data is still useful because you can still sort by average monthly searches and see what is the most popular keywords just by looking at these ranges of data. Now, you obviously would probably prefer to have the exact average monthly searches here, but it really isn't necessary to do your keyword research because you can still find all of these keywords that have at least 1,000 in average monthly searches and somewhere under 10,000. So as you scroll down, you start to see less and less, and you can start to see which keywords are more popular and which keywords are less popular. So what you wanna do is come over here to the campaign screen, create a new campaign. I would just recommend creating a new search campaign. I'm not gonna go through that right now, but you can create a new search campaign and let's just say you're trying to get leads or sales. You could even set it up as a website traffic campaign and set your bids as low as possible. So use manual bidding and just set them as low as you possibly can. And then once you have your campaign running for a little bit, you don't need to worry about spending a ton of money on it. You can set your daily budget at $1 just to make sure you're not spending a ton of money on a campaign campaign you're not paying attention to if your main goal is just to use the keyword planner for now. So that's all you need to do is create a new campaign. 
And if I come over here to my account that I use for tutorials, I do have an active campaign running. It doesn't spend a lot. It might spend $10 a month. But if we come over here to discover new keywords and we do the same search for wicker furniture and we scroll down, click on get results, what we're going to see is the actual average monthly search volume for these keywords. So that's how you get that data and that's how you unlock it is by creating a campaign. So coming over here, lesson number two, how to see the exact search volume is run a Google ads campaign in your account and you'll be able to see that exact number. Okay, so next is going to be number three. So how to find SEO and PPC keywords. So there's two main ways you could either use a keyword or a series of 10 keywords or more if you do multiple searches or you can use your website or a competitor's website. So I'll show you both of those right now, and I'm going to start using this account here that actually has the average monthly search volume because it's a little bit better. It gives us a little bit more data here. So we're going to exit out of this for right now, and we're going to click on discover new keywords. So you've already seen me enter a keyword here. So in this, you can enter up to 10 keywords, and if you want, you could actually switch your language targeting and switch your location targeting before you ever search. You could also do this after you search, so I'll also show you that after I do a search. And then you can enter a domain to use as a filter. So you can see using your site will filter out services, products, or brands that you don't offer. I generally don't enter my domain here, but it is something you can do. The other option is to start with a website. So what you do is you can enter your website here, you can enter a competitor's website here, or any domain, and you could either use the entire website or just use a specific page. So you can go to a page about, let's just say an SEO tutorial that one of your competitors wrote, and choose use only this page, enter that URL to their SEO tutorial, and it will bring you up the best keywords for that individual page. Or if you wanna know the keywords for an entire website, then you can enter that here as well. So we're gonna come over here to start with keywords, and let's just say I do wicker furniture, and we'll do wicker decor. I'm gonna enter a bunch of keywords here. Okay, so once you enter 10 keywords, it's gonna say you enter the limit of 10 keywords to get ideas. If you want historical statistics for existing keywords, you can click here to get metrics. So I'll show you that in a little bit. But for right now, what you can do is start with keywords. We could change these, but I'm just gonna click on get results. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna pull in some of the best keywords for your Google Ads campaigns or for search engine optimization. So entering these 10 keywords gave me over 7,100 keyword ideas. Now what you can do is start using some filters to narrow this list down and refine keywords. Again, I'll go through that in a minute. I just kinda wanna show you how to find some of these keywords here. So you can see it's gonna start with the keywords we provided at the very top, give us our average monthly search volume. You can see competition here. Now one thing that's gonna be useful is if you're running Google Ads campaigns, is you can see what the top of page bid is, the low range, and the top of page bid, the high range. So you can see a range of what com your competitors are actually bidding on this keyword. So it's gonna vary for any keyword you enter. And usually what you find is, let's just say, something like wicker sofas are worth more than wicker chairs. So if a company sells a sofa, they make more money. So if we come over here, you're gonna see companies tend to bid higher on wicker sofas versus wicker chairs. So that's kind of what you're gonna see just based on whatever keywords you're targeting. It's gonna vary based on competition and how much a conversion is gonna be worth for each business. You might find some of these bid ranges for marketing companies or for lawyers up in $10, $20, even more sometimes, because they're willing to bid that high to make sure that they're at the top of Google ads because a single client can turn into thousands of dollars in revenue. So these are some different keywords that it pulled up, and then you're gonna see even more keyword ideas, and it generally ranks them by relevance, but it's not always perfect. So you're gonna see outdoor sectional, you're gonna see some relevant keywords, cane furniture, cane chairs, cheap rattan garden furniture. So you're gonna see a bunch of different keywords here that might not contain the keyword wicker. I'll show you how to kind of narrow it down as we go. But once you have all these keywords, you could download keyword ideas now. We can come up here to the top, change our location. So let's just say I just wanna target, I don't know, Florida, for example. I can enter just Florida here and I can choose that as a state, target it, click on save and see what the average monthly search volume is just for that location. So obviously it's gonna go down a little bit, but it's not, not too bad because Florida's in the south and it's very popular to have wicker furniture when you're outside a lot. So you still have some really good average monthly search volume here. You can narrow this down to a single city, a county, 
uh, DMA regions, so marketing regions. So usually what I do is just United States, but you can also enter other countries as well. So if I want to target Canada, for example, I can target Canada. If I want to target Mexico, for example, I can target Mexico. So you really want to focus on the locations where you serve. So if you're a plumber in Jacksonville, for example, you probably don't want to be targeting Alabama and Savannah and some of these different areas because you don't serve those areas. So that's why changing your location can be handy. I'm just going to keep this as United States. Click on save. Now you can change your language targeting. So if your customers speak different languages, you can actually adjust that as well. You can switch your search networks to Google or Google and search partners. I would recommend just keeping this as Google. And then you can actually find search volume for a lot of data just beyond the last 12 months. You could do last 24 months. We could do all available. That's going to go all the way back to March 2017, bring us to February 2021. So what that allows us to do is see some trend lines over time. You can see there's a big peak in 2020, most likely because of the pandemic and people being at home, they're more likely to be looking for outdoor furniture as it gets warm out. So you're I don't imagine 2021 being as much of a peak as we saw here. Would have been nice to have wickerguide.com last year, my Wicker website. But you can see pretty consistent search volume, a little bit of growth year over year for the most part. And you can actually look at it for individual keywords as well. So Wicker furniture, Wicker decor, Wicker chairs. So some of the things people are going to be more likely to look at. And you can actually see how things have trended over time. So sometimes you might see a keyword dropping if something's not as popular as it used to be. But what's good is if you see your trend line increasing pretty steadily over time. So different things you can look at when you're trying to find keywords. Now the other thing we can do is rather than starting with keywords, start with a website. So we'll just enter wickerguide.com. So this is my wickered furniture website. We can use the entire website. We can use just this specific page. We'll use the entire site, click on get results. Okay, so this found 621 keyword ideas, and if we scroll down here a little bit, it's saying it's ranking them by relevance, but it's actually just in alphabetical order. So it just has all of these in alphabetical order. What we can do is click on average monthly searches and see which keywords actually have the most average monthly searches that are relevant to our website. So furniture patio, furniture outdoor, lounge chair, patio chair. So some different things you can find here. Obviously relevance would probably be a little bit better, even though it's just alphabetical. But these are the two main ways that you can do searches and adjust some of your settings up here at the top, looking at different trends, looking at different locations, and you can keep entering different keywords as well if you come over here to start with keywords. I'm gonna show you a good method in a minute where you can do a couple searches and then combine your keyword lists using either Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets, so either way will work. So this is how you can easily find keywords using the Google Keyword Planner. So coming back over here, this is how you can find SEO and PPC keywords. It helps to look at bids sometimes if you want to see what the average bids are. You can see competition, which can be helpful for both pay-per-click and SEO. But really what you want to do is discover new keywords. I would recommend entering your website, a competitor's website. Try different seed keywords. So when you're entering those 10 keywords, try all sorts of keywords to see what you can find. The more searches you can do, the more keywords you're ultimately going to be able to find that you can eventually optimize for on your website. So next lesson will work well, how to refine keywords and use filters. So you can use filters to improve your research and the refine keywords tool, which is fairly new. They introduced it last year. So refine keywords is a good way to take specific brands out or focus on different styles or colors, depending on what keywords you're targeting. So we're going to come back over here and let's do start with keywords again. And for this, I'm just going to do wicker furniture and we'll do wicker baskets. So we'll just use these two. I'm not going to use my domain to use as a filter and we'll click on get results. Okay, so you're going to see this starts to load here and now we have a bunch of options here to refine our keywords, brand or non-brand, place, amenity, furniture, material, color, geometric shape, and others. What I want to show you first are filters. So if we scroll down here, you can see all of these different keywords here. So if we click on add filter, I can say I want to make sure the keyword text contains wicker. Okay, so I only want keywords here that contain wicker. Click on apply. Okay, so that's gonna remove that keyword that was at the top, outdoor sectional, because the word wicker is not in the keyword. And if we scroll down here, everything here is gonna contain the word wicker. Okay, so we could add another filter. And let's just say I wanna make sure average monthly searches are greater than or equal to 250. So we click on apply now. Okay, so that's gonna remove some of the less popular keywords at the bottom of the list. Let's say we wanna add another filter and I only want 
keywords where the top of page bid, the high range is at least $1.50. So I'm looking for keywords that are gonna be a little bit more valuable based on what advertisers are bidding on them. So we'll click on apply here and that's gonna remove a lot of keywords as well. So what we're left with are keywords that should be really relevant and right now it's saying it's showing 172 keywords out of the initial over 4,000 that it came up with. So this is a good way to find some really valuable keywords that we can start optimizing for and then improve over time. Because I know that advertisers are bidding a lot on these keywords, so even as I come down here, I can say, okay, something like a round wicker ottoman. Let me make sure I put together a page full of round wicker ottomans so when people search that, they find my website and hopefully purchase from me. Keep scrolling down, we can find a lot of different ideas here, wicker dining table, conversation set, white wicker hampers. So as you narrow things down a little bit with filters, it can help you find some valuable keywords. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click over here to filters again, we'll remove our filters. I'm just gonna keep the keyword text contains wicker for now. So that's gonna be the only filter we have. You can see we're up to over 2,600 keywords again of the initial 4,000. So now what I wanna show you is refine keywords. So if we come over here, what you can do is exclude keywords that are from brands or non-brands. So a lot of times what I'll do is click this and then just do non-brands. So we're just including non-branded keywords. So what you're gonna see is some of the keywords have been removed here. We're gonna dismiss this at the bottom, but usually you're not gonna target keywords related to specific stores like Ikea, Target, Walmart, and Home Depot, unless you're writing a guide specifically for the best wicker furniture on Amazon or one of these websites, for example. So that's how you can exclude brand or non-brand. And usually they have brands of furniture too. So if we come down, these are some different brands of furniture. These might be some that I wanna keep because there's no reason not to optimize for some of these furniture makers that actually sell wicker furniture. So if I'm holding a bunch of, let's just say, out sunny wicker furniture products, there's no reason for me not to optimize for that keyword as well. So we keep scrolling down here. They have view 21 more, but I just wanna come down to place here for now. So with place, I can choose specific areas where this furniture would usually go, patio, lounge, kitchen, bathroom. So this could be useful if I'm saying, okay, I'm doing a page about wicker bathroom furniture or wicker bathroom baskets, and so I'm gonna get rid of everything in place but bathroom. Okay, so you can see if I click on bathroom here, now we're down to 1,250 keywords. So it shows 25 here, so that number is actually gonna be the number of keywords included that actually include bathroom in them down here so if i say the keyword text much must, must contain bathroom then it's only going to show those this isn't perfect because you don't put wicker bar stools in a bathroom generally you don't always put some of these different things in a bathroom but some of them would belong in there a small wicker basket potentially a wicker laundry hamper you could use those in a bathroom so some different ways to narrow down your keywords if we keep coming down here to refine keywords one thing that can be useful is let's just say I come down to material. I just want to include things that are wicker material. So if I click this, it'll get rid of all those. This is already covered with my keyword filter. So we'll just close that out here. Now let's just say I'm focusing on specific colors of furniture. So let's say I want to use black wicker furniture. So we'll get rid of color here. We'll click on black. And that's going to give us some more options that are going to be related to black wicker furniture. Again, it's not going to be perfect. So we could add a filter here and say keyword text contains black. Okay, we'll click on apply. Okay, so we got rid of the other one with keyword text contains wicker because basically if we have two different filters, then we're saying the keyword text must either contain wicker or it must contain black. Include all of the keywords with those. So if I'm just focusing here, you can see it's gonna narrow down those keywords a little bit better. So different ways to use it. I still prefer to use filters over refining the keywords, but it could be useful in some scenarios when you are refining keywords. If you're looking for specific shapes of furniture, if we come up here and we're looking for, let's say something specific to tables, so we'll get rid of all this, click on table, that will help us narrow things down a little bit better too. Again, it's not perfect with refined keywords. I still find myself using filters more than the refined keywords option, but it's a great way to narrow down some of the different keywords that you might wanna target. And you can also use the filters to make sure you're finding the most competitive keywords. So coming back over here, Looking at lesson number four, how to refine keywords and use filters. So you can use filters to improve your research and then the refined keywords tool will also help you remove some unrelated keywords. I use it mostly for the brands and things like that. I don't use it as much when I'm kind of narrowing down by colors or by materials or anything else like that.
Okay, so lesson number five. So how to get search volume and forecasts. So one of the things you can do is when you do pull your keyword list. So let's just say I have a massive keyword list that I just pulled. I'm gonna show you how to do that in the next step. But what we can do is click on the X up here and you can see there's an option to get search volume and forecasts. So it's gonna say enter or paste your keywords, one word or phrase per line or separated by commas, or you can upload a file here. So if I'm ever using get search volume and forecast, what I'll do is I'll open up here for wickerguide.com. I have my Excel spreadsheet and we're just going to use the 100 keywords that I'm optimizing for by the end of March. So we're going to take all of these keywords here. We're going to copy them. We're going to come back over to the keyword planner and we're going to paste all these keywords. So what we can find by doing this is if we click on get started, it's going to actually pull in a lot of forecast data and show us what we can get with our Google ads campaign. So you can look at forecasts here, you can add negative keywords, you can look at historical metrics, and you can create a campaign just by entering those keywords. Now, I wouldn't recommend creating a campaign like that because what it did is it created one ad group. So if we come down here, there's one ad group with 100 keywords in it. You obviously don't wanna do that, but if we do scroll down here, you can see what it would actually look like for specific keywords you're targeting, how many clicks, impressions, and the costs you would get. And right now, what it's looking at is next month. So it's looking at whenever you do this data, it's gonna look at the next month and it's gonna project what you can get with your plan. So let's just say, for example, right now when we enter all these keywords, they're broad match keywords. So let's just say, I know I wanna target phrase match keywords. So we're gonna choose phrase match and that's gonna make all of these phrase match, which will give us a little bit better forecast data. Now it's gonna say your plan can get 1.1 thousand clicks for $390 with a $13 average month or average daily budget. So let's just say I want to spend $10 per day, okay? And if we scroll down here, let's just say I'll add conversion metrics. Let's say my conversion rate is 5% and my value per conversion is $20. So we'll click on save. So it's going to add that data in there as well. And what it's going to tell us is with a $10 average daily budget, we're going to spend $300 in April. So the next month, we're going to get 46 conversions. So we would spend $300. Our conversion value would be $920 our average cost per acquisition would be $6.51. So if our value per conversion is $20, this would be a really good campaign because our return on ad spend is 3.1. So we have three times of what we spent as a return on our ad spend. So 920 clicks, 39,000 impressions, $300 in cost. So different ways you can look at how well your campaign might perform if you're targeting some of these different keywords. You can see our average cost per click is 33 cents. And what this is looking at is a campaign with maximized clicks, improves the probability of reaching these X estimates by getting you the most clicks. Now, if I click on edit here, what I can do is change my bid strategy to manual CPC, click on apply. Let's say I have a 40 cent max cost per click. Now it's saying for $330, I, my return on ad spend would be three. So pretty similar to before, $990 conversion value, and we would spend pretty much the same average CPC. So let's say I bring this all the way down and let's say I wanna bid as low as possible. So I'm bidding 25 cents max CPC. So what it's saying is my cost would only be $41. So it's really gonna be that I'm really limited if I set my CPC this low. Only 11 conversions for $41. That's gonna be for the entire month. My daily budget would be $1.90, but it's constrained because my bids are too low. So this will help you find some good ideas for bidding. You can see which keywords are gonna give you the most in terms of clicks, impressions, your total costs. So if we click on cost, wicker baskets, wicker furniture, wicker chairs, obviously some of the more high volume keywords are gonna come in with cost. So this is how you can get some forecasts. If you enter a keyword list, you can also use forecasts if you build a Google ads campaign using the Google Keyword Planner. Again, I'll show you that in one of the follow-up sections here in this video. But for right now, what I wanted to do was show you how to get some search volume and forecast data for your keyword lists so you can get some more data on how much you would have to bid, how many conversions you can drive within your budget, and what would probably be the ideal scenario for you based on your budget and based on what you're selling and what you're bidding on. Again, these forecasts are not gonna be perfect because your conversion rate can vary, your value per conversion can vary, your max CPC might increase over time. So it really depends on a lot of factors, but it is a good way to get a little bit of initial data before you launch a campaign. 
Okay, so number six, how to create keyword lists in Excel and Google Sheets. So how to download multiple keyword lists and remove duplicate keywords. This is one of my favorite things to do and it's usually the process that I use. If you watch some of my old keyword research videos, you've seen me do this before already, but I wanna show you how to do it and how to export some data from the Google Keyword Planner and then pull out the top keywords for your business. So let's just use Wicker Furniture again as an example and we'll use wickerguide.com. So let's say I want to, and now you can see down here, we do have our plan that we were just creating. So we can always go back to that if you are creating a plan. But what we're going to do right now is click on discover new keywords and we're going to enter wicker furniture. We'll do wicker baskets. Okay. So we enter a bunch of keywords here and we're going to click on get results. Okay. So this gave us over 7,000 keyword ideas. And now I'm just going to add a filter. So I just want to make sure that my keyword text contains wicker. So I only want to focus on keywords that have wicker in them for right now. We're going to click on apply. So that's going to remove some of those keywords. So now we're down to 4,500 total keywords and let's just add one more filter. And let's say I want the average monthly searches to be at least 250. So we used that before. So just get rid of some of these really low search volume keywords. So what we're going to see here is we have a total of 419 keywords. So that's a good list to get started with. So what you want to do is download keyword ideas and we can either download it as a CSV file or download it specifically to Google Sheets. I'm going to do it as a CSV file and I'll import the data into Google Sheets as we go. Okay, so this is what the file is going to look like when you download it. So it pretty much the what it looks like in Google Keyword Planner, just the spreadsheet version of it. So you have keyword, it's going to show currency, US dollars, average monthly searches, competition, some more data here as we keep going over to the right. So there's a ton of data for search volume. Historically, you can see a little bit more down here for non brand outdoor furniture. So to understand what category some things fits in. Usually when I do this, I look at average monthly searches and keyword. So what we can do is clean up this spreadsheet a little bit. So I'm just going to get rid of these top three rows. We're going to delete them. We're going to get rid of this currency row right here. And then I'm going to get rid of every single row over to the right hand side. So we're just going to delete all this data because we just want keyword and average search volume. That's all we have right now. Okay. So what we can do is to combine a couple keyword lists, we're going to come back over to the Google keyword planner. And let's say for this one, what I want to do is we're going to start with a website and rather than using my website, so I'm going to get rid of all these keywords here. Okay. So we're going to come over to start with a website and let's just say rather than using my website, I'm going to use one of my top competitors websites. So for that, what it's going to be is wickerwarehouse.com. We're going to use the entire website and we're going to click on get results. Now it's showing 103 of 694 keyword ideas. So keep in mind, if you had filters before, they're still going to be there. So I can keep these filters for right now because I just want to keep making sure that I have keyword text that contains Wicker and then average monthly searches as, is at least 250. So what we can do is download these keyword ideas as well. We'll do a CSV file again. Okay, so we're going to open this spreadsheet. So it's going to have all that information and we're just going to do the same exact thing we did with the other one and we're going to combine these spreadsheets. So we have the keywords and we have average search volume. So I'm just going to take this data in these first two columns. We're going to copy it. We're going to come back over to our other spreadsheet. Now you can repeat this process as many times as you want. You can do this with 50 spreadsheets if you want and just keep removing duplicates. So what you want to do is just have a long list of keywords here. We can rank them by average search volume if you want. So we'll come over here. We'll come over to data and we'll just do Z to a expand the selection. So you're going to start seeing so wicker chairs, wicker chair. Okay. So we can see some of the most popular keywords. Now, just to show you, there's some duplicates on this list. Let's just say we come back over here to a, we sort descending again. If you scroll down here, you're going to see wicker store and wicker store. So if you combine multiple lists, you're going to have some duplicates there. It's really easy to remove duplicates in Microsoft Excel because they have a just one button to do it. So we're going to take this data in both of these columns. I'm going to sort it again by average monthly search volume. Okay. So we'll expand the selection. So we're going to take the data in these two columns. And what you would want to do is click on this data tab in the top of your Microsoft Excel, and you're going to come over and you're going to click right here. It's going to be remove duplicates or delete duplicate rows from a sheet. So we're going to click here. We're going to select both of these and click on OK. And what that's going to do, so you're going to see 44 duplicate values found and removed, 481 unique values remain. So now that's going to clean up our list a little, a little bit. And you can see we have 481 total keywords here. So we can start optimizing for some of these keywords if we want to start creating some content. 
but it gives us a good way to build a list, especially if you come back over to the keyword planner, enter another competitor, go back over to keywords, enter more keywords here. So as you do that more and more, you can come, with, come up with a really large list of keywords and you can ensure that you don't have duplicate keywords all over the place. So you obviously don't wanna have a ton of duplicate keywords because then you just have kind of an unorganized list. So the way to do this in Google Sheets is we're gonna undo what we did so it brings back those duplicate keywords. Okay, so what you wanna do first is open up a new blank Google Sheet. So if you already use Google Sheets, you just wanna sign into your Google account. You can go to sheets.google.com, create a new sheet, and you're gonna see something that looks like this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to our spreadsheet and you wanna copy all of the data in A and B. So we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom Okay, so you can see we have all of our data here. So we're back to 522 rows. We're gonna copy this here. We're gonna come over to Google Sheets, just paste this right in column A and column B. And then it's pretty much the same exact thing we did in Microsoft Excel. We're gonna come over here to data and all you need to do is remove duplicates. So we're gonna select both of these columns, remove duplicates, and you're gonna see 42 duplicate rows found and removed, 480 unique rows remain. So that's how we can find some unique keywords. And this is my favorite way to do keyword research because you can come up with all sorts of keywords this way. And then what you can do is as you're looking at things related to something like wicker chairs, for example, all you have to do is come back over to the keyword planner, enter wicker chairs here, and you're gonna find a ton of keywords related to wicker chairs. And you can start to find more and more that are long tail variations of short tail keywords. So as you're creating content, as you're targeting keywords through Google ads, you can get a ton of different ideas. So as you scroll down, let's just say high back wicker chair, I can create a custom piece of content for high back wicker chairs. For something like wicker lounge, I can make sure I have wicker lounge chairs and I have I'm optimized for some of these different long tail or even shorter variations of the keywords that I'm targeting. So. One of my favorite things to do, this is lesson six, is to download multiple keyword lists and remove duplicates using either Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. It's really easy, there's buttons just to remove duplicates. Just find the data section. When you're in data, remove duplicates and you'll have a keyword list that's clean without any extra information that you don't need. Okay, so that brings us to number seven. So I'm gonna do this sort of quickly because this could actually take hours honestly but how to create google ads campaigns with the google keyword planner what you want to do is you can create ad groups and you want to add related keywords to an ad group so if we come back over here and we're, we'll just come over we'll get rid of the website here start with keywords and we'll do wicker furniture so i'm just going to enter one keyword here and click on get results okay so if we come down can see keyword text contains wicker average monthly searches at least 250 so one thing you can do is come over here to grouped ideas i still don't think grouped ideas are the absolute best because if you come over you're going to see ikea wicker chair you're going to see wicker bedroom furniture white wicker bedroom furniture so you can find some different ideas coming in here if we remove average monthly searches so we'll get rid of this and let's just say we get rid of keyword text contains wicker for right now if we come in here, you're gonna see teardrop chair. So you're gonna have a bunch of keywords here that don't actually contain your main keyword, like something like wicker, for example. So you could use filters, but I've never found these to be overly helpful when I'm building a campaign. What I actually like using this more for in the grouped ideas when you're doing your research is let's say we enter wicker, we're using text match, we click on apply, I actually use these more as content ideas. So something like bar set, I can say, okay, I don't have an article yet for bar set, so I can create an article about bar sets, and I can use some of these long tail keywords to make sure I'm targeting them. So I could do a list of three piece wicker bar sets, a list of five piece wicker bar sets, and I can use all of that to increase my rankings for this keyword and some of these long tail keywords as well. So if we scroll down here, we'll just find another example, old wicker furniture, so maybe I wanna find some older pieces that people would be kind of look at as more antiques or something along that line outdoor love seat so let's say i do an article for outdoor wicker love seats i make sure i incorporate cushions so some of the different cushion options people could add i add some white wicker love seats i add some black wicker love seats i do glider love seats and then you're going to see here just a specific product i could try to make sure i add this to my website as well so i actually like using grouped ideas more for that purpose so in order to build a campaign, what I generally do is come over to keyword ideas and we're gonna, I'm actually just gonna get rid of this chart for right now. So we're gonna click on this arrow to show the chart or not show the chart. 
and we're going to start right at the top and let's say I want to take wicker furniture we're going to add it to our plan we're going to create a new ad group so we're going to say wicker furniture create let's say I want to bid on the exact version of this keyword in this ad group so we'll do exact match add keywords so that's how we start creating our plan so next we'll do wicker chair so let's just say I take wicker chair here we're adding it to our plan we're going to create a new ad group we're going to do wicker chair I can do either exact match maybe I want to do a phrase match for this so we'll do phrase match add keywords okay so now I could do wicker patio furniture but we'll scroll down we'll find things that are a little bit more exact so something like wicker bar stools here for example so I can add it to my plan I can create a new ad group I can say wicker bar stools we'll click on create I want to target the phrase match version of this keyword so we'll add this keyword now let's say I want to find more keywords just related to bar stools then what I can do is say the keyword contains and we're going to do bar stools and we'll click on apply okay so we have white wicker bar stools so all we need to do is take this keyword here we're going to add it to our plan it's going to already be in this ad group phrase match so we can add that keyword maybe I want to target resin bar stools maybe I want to target outdoor bar stools rattan so we'll do wicker rattan bar stools we'll keep coming down rattan swivel swivel bar stools gray wicker bar stools so this let's say I don't want to obviously do something for target so I could do wicker swivel bar stools so now it allows us to add more keywords to this ad group phrase match keyword we can add this keywords here now the way I kind of look at ad groups so people ask me this question a lot with how do you kind of choose which keywords to put in different ad groups it's really based on the landing page where I'm sending traffic so I'm actually gonna click on the keywords tab here just to show you this example and we'll just click on ad group to make sure we have all of our barstool keywords together and so the way I look at which keywords to put in which specific ad groups is based on landing pages so let's just say I have a page just full of wicker swivel bar stools what I would do is I would take this keyword wicker swivel bar stools rattan swivel bar stools and I would actually put them in their own ad group so I would take these two keywords I would probably remove them and then I'd create a new ad group so you could either go over here to create a new ad group or you can come back over to the keyword ideas to also create a new ad group so when I think of ad groups I really look at landing pages if I have one landing page for all the wicker bar stools on my website then I would include all of these keywords in the same ad group if I have a separate landing page for gray wicker bar stools I'll separate that out into a different land or into a different ad group send that traffic to that landing page because someone who goes to Google and searches something like gray wicker bar stools they already know they already have a really strong idea of what they're looking for they just want a list of gray wicker bar stools so if I have a landing page that can accomplish that then that's where I want to send that traffic it's gonna help me with quality scores it's gonna help me with conversion rate it's gonna help me with my costs so there's so many reasons to kind of separate things out into different ad groups but the main reason to do it is to make sure you're giving people the best possible user experience with the different landing pages you have on your website so let's come back over here again to keyword ideas we can keep building our plan and let's get rid of our keyword text contains bar stools so we'll get rid of this filter here and we'll just scroll down we'll add a couple more keywords so let's just say we want to do wicker egg chair so we'll take this we'll add it to our plan again you want to create a new ad group wicker egg chairs Oop. Okay, we're going to create this ad group phrase match keyword and we're going to add that keyword so we'll do wicker rocking chair this will be the last one we do for now so we're going to add this to our plan we can come down create ad group wicker rocking chairs so this is a good way to create really the framework of your campaign because you're creating a ton of ad groups you're putting your keywords in there you can choose your your match type as you're adding your keywords we can add this one in here and then as we come over to our plan we can change our plan name so let's just say I do wicker guide campaign we'll click on save you can adjust location targeting you can adjust language targeting you can adjust your bid strategy but what you're gonna see here is we can start to get some, get some of this forecast data if we enter our average daily budget if we come over to ad groups we can see what our ad groups are already how many clicks and impressions are forecasted for some of these different ad groups that we have we can look at some of our different keywords but once we come over here to plan overview we can create our campaign so if we click on create campaign we need to name it so we'll do wicker guide campaign again click on save we can also save this plan 
So you can see here, Wicker Guide campaign was created. So forecast as of date implemented. So clicks, impressions, costs. Again, this is all forecast data. We can come down and see what our campaign looks like. But what you would need to do now is we click on view campaign and then you would need to create your advertisements, create your ad extensions. So, so we're in the overview for our campaign here. So let's just say we come over to ad groups. It's gonna show all of our ad groups here. So if I come into Wicker Barstools, the ad group we added the most keywords to, we can come over to ads and extensions and we can create a responsive search ad. So you would just come in here, enter your final URL. So let's just say it's wickerguide.com slash wickerbarstools. That's where I'm gonna send traffic to. I would enter my URL there. I can enter a display URL. So maybe I do barstools. We scroll down. For optimal performance, include these keywords in your headline. So I could actually just use these keywords as all different headlines. So I could do wicker barstools, wicker rattan barstools. I could do something like top rated, wicker bar stools so we can use all of these different headlines here so i would recommend just filling out every single headline we can add all of our description lines here click on save ad or save and create extensions and then we can also go through and create some of our site link extensions call out extensions so that's how you would create a campaign using the google keyword planner basically all you need to do is keep adding these keywords to your plan and once you have your plan completed, you've added all the keywords you want to target, then you can start to create your campaign, create your advertisements. So it's really easy to create advertisements here once you have all of your ad groups. It's just going to be a little bit time consuming. So that's going to be lesson number seven, how to create Google Ads campaigns with the Keyword Planner, how to create ad groups and ad related keywords. So hopefully this video is helpful in teaching you how to use the Google Keyword Planner and we had seven different lessons today, so you should know how to find keywords, you should know how to use filters and how to refine keywords, you should know how to look at search volume data, how to launch a campaign in order to get access to search volume data, and really the two most important things that I would like to go over is how to come up with a good keyword list by combining several of your keyword research lists and then just removing the duplicate keywords and the duplicate search volumes here. So what that's gonna allow you to do is find a great list of keywords that you can target, you can rank it by average search volume, and you can start targeting these keywords with your content and then with your Google Ads or any other advertising keyword campaigns that you're running. So this is my video. Again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. I'm gonna have a shortened version of this video as well, so kinda of just a quick overview for the Google Keyword Planner and how to use some of the main features. But otherwise, this is kind of a complete overview for how to get started with the Keyword Planner. The more you use it, the more comfortable you'll be with it. But you should be able to create some really good keyword lists now for search engine optimization and for PPC advertising. So thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.